This is the Just Steph Show, and I'm your host, Steph Palermo, your Italian Boston girl who's an empath, healer, and all-around seeker of wisdom. Tune in weekly for advice on how to live your best life at work, home, or play so you can feel groovy every day. This is the Just Steph Show. I'm your host, Steph Palermo, and I'm your Italian Boston girl who moves south who shows you how to enjoy life. And we are seven lifers, we're empty nesters, newly single, and those starting over. H3, your healthy, happy hip years are just beginning. And I have the Monteroso brothers here with me, David and Arthur Monteroso. Thank What's you. Up? Although I, I just see the back of his head, but that's okay. So, um, hey guys, happy Friday. Oh, and you, you're going to have great content today because I. I'm so excited about about uh, talking with you guys because, you know, and we're not. Oh, look at you! You got your scarf on. How nice! Oh, cute. Yeah, very cute. <laughs> I feel so oh, look cute. what I'm dressed in. I got my Red Sox Whoa, stuff on. Let's go Red Sox. I did this we're for you guys. We're at the game. The yeah, World Series. I saw game. that. That was crazy. That was so funny. My son called me this morning uh, to wish me a happy birthday, and he's in LA. He goes, I'm going to try and get tickets. You know, How so, much were they? A million? Yeah, he, well, he said they were five hundred dollars. He's twenty six years old, so I mean, you know, that's a lot of money, and you know, so. Can you give me some air time? You got plenty. Yeah. So, well, I'm sorry. I was trying to overshadow me. Like He's always. like, you know what I mean? Why are you giving yeah. some screen time? You got too much screen time. <laughs> oh my god! Well, so uh, yesterday was my birthday, and uh, my boyfriend came in from Boston. Yeah. So, yeah. So um, it was funny because I was I put this on today. He goes, he goes, you look great. You know, he's downstairs watching TV. So um, I said, yeah, I have I have a podcast with because I always tell him about you guys. And I was. Told him we said, what's up? What's yeah. up? What's his name? Eddie. What's up, Eddie? Eddie, my. I'll tell you what Eddie's doing. Eddie's happy. He's like, dude, I'm glad she's doing this podcast so I get some TV time. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what he's saying. <laughs> Thank God she's working. She's not talking to me. Eddie's calm right now. <laughs> he, goes, oh, boy. he goes, oh boy, you haven't shut up. <laughs> <laughs> my boy, Eddie. Awesome. And so yeah, we went out with friends last night and uh. So uh, it was good. We had dinner and everything. So, but tonight we're gonna go to dinner here too. And but then we're gonna come back. I think I want to come back here and watch the game because I it's more fun, you know, to be relaxed and have cocktails at the house. Oh, way more fun. Unless you're unless at the you're game. Unless you're at the game with us. And yeah. Wow, well, yeah. that would be way more fun for me. I'm telling you. Yeah, so, you would go. You would go. Um, I know. Yeah. So that's it's so exciting for the Red Sox. Uh, you know, one of the guys that we were out with last night, he goes, I. Th- in his like southern accent, I think they're gonna sweep it. <laughs> I think they're gonna sweep it too, though. So yeah, so I think I think it's crazy. I'm hoping. Exciting, but you know what's weird? It's like so weird having them be in this. You want me to add it? Do you want me to just get out of the screen? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, Steph. Let's talk about some stuff. I know. <laughs> well, I want to just for a second talk about the Red Sox, just because. Yeah. Um, I have you guys up there, and we can talk about the Red Sox. And um, wow, you, it's awesome. funny for me. Like, I can't believe the oh, Poppy's not involved. You know, Big Big Poppy's not there for this. You know, I know. I was, I was just thinking it'd be he cool if he me. was there. You know, he's the best. Where's Where's um, Marty Walsh? He's sleeping. I just talked. <laughs> I just talked to him this morning. He said hi. He said that uh, he has some business engagements. You know, taking care of the city. Oh, nice. Get in there, Arthur. You're not Marty Walsh is your boy. That's so funny. I, You know what? When I saw him that day in the feast, I was dying. I was like, I have to get a picture with this guy. <laughs> because oh, that was the best we picture. literally talked about him that day. I, that was crazy. That is crazy how that stuff works. You know what? We're not FCC regulated, so that's pretty good. I don't want to be vulgar or anything, but you did a post a couple of weeks back, and I want to talk a little bit about this. And... Um, I have a lot of real estate friends here in Atlanta, a lot. And I yep. think that I want to post this video and so that they can get something from you all because you guys are so successful up in Boston and you're rocking it in so many areas. And I want to talk about that. But you had mentioned, um, David, on a, vid, on a social media post, don't work with assholes. <laughs> 
Are you going from know? one a hole to the rest of them? From one a hole to another. I know, and you know, and I think I was gonna I, when I was thinking about this when we were gonna talk. I was thinking about how I was gonna present that, and I said, I could say jerk, but really it doesn't embody like anybody can be kind of a jerk once in a while, but yeah, you have to be certified to be an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can certify an a-hole yeah and once you know and it's like it's once you're that you're that you know it's it is what it's hard to um shake that i think yeah. but you know do you think that you've changed your thinking as you've been because you're more successful at this point where you can be a little bit choosy i, I think so 100 yeah. percent. i think when you start out in the beginning of any business or career and you only have one client that you're working with. You live and die by that client. So even if they treat you like crap and they are an a-hole, you're not going to necessarily be like, oh, I'm not going to work with you. Right. But when you have an abundance mentality and you worked hard and you built up your business and you have an abundance of clients, you go like, why would I work with this guy when these other five people love me? You know, and you're like, I don't, I don't need to deal with this. But let him answer because he put up the post. Um, he didn't even know what it meant when he put it up. <laughs> 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 what's the question well well the question is is you know because i think sometimes when you're beginning in business you almost work will work with anybody just because you're trying to make make ends meet you're trying to advance yeah i think that that mentality uh, of not working with people that don't they're not they're not appreciative or they don't have that um, a, a positive outlook on life. And do you think that it's kind of a twofold question. Do you think that your attitude has changed since you've become way more successful than from the beginning days, but knowing what you know now, would you go back and change anything? Like, would you not work with certain people just for the sake of having the business? Yep. So there was one point in my life where I was the biggest asshole I knew. So <laughs> that's kind of like why I say it. But I think in the beginning of any career, you have to do what it takes. You have to like bite the bullet and eat shit, so to speak. Right. And you just got to do whatever you have to do. At some point when, when your business starts going good and, and financially like money abundance is good, and instead of having one or two or five or 10 clients, which is never enough in one year to go into like 50 or a hundred clients or more, then you can get rid of the assholes in your life. So as your life progresses, I think as you become a better person, like everybody in my circle, everybody in my circle is incredible. Even if we're not best friends, the circles I'm in, I think the people are just such incredible people. They're so genuine. They do such nice things in the world. And in, in some on a grand scale, some not on a grand scale. But then, like, I'll tell you, you know, there's obviously certain situations that I think of. With us, it's real estate business, but it's also in life, you know. I have two little stories. One of my old friends from my, we'll say, past life, but before I completely went you know, like I, I'm going to do a post like 15 years ago, how I looked and how I look now. Right. And I'm going to say like, but my mindset is 15 years different as well because the books I read, the things I studied, you know? So I had a friend of mine reach out to me and, and within the first like couple minutes, it just became drama and like long texts of like, Oh, you changed. The other person said you changed. You don't care. And I was going, you know what? I used to live in that world, but I don't. So get out of my face. I don't, I, and as a matter of fact, the first thing I did was I deleted my number and I tell my kid the same thing. So that's what I mean. Like you don't want those people around you because they're like leeches, you know, they're going to bring you down. It's like crabs in a bucket, right? right. Uh, supposedly like if one crab tries to get out, the reason they say crab in a bucket is because all the other crabs are going to pull you down and, and if you keep trying to get out, they're going to cut your legs off. You know what I mean? Wow. They're going to cut your legs. Why would you want to be around that? You'll never get ahead. That's the thing. So, like, you got to run from the bucket of assholes. Right. And you know what's so funny about that? And, and it's so true, but I think as, we, as you evolve and as we evolve and get um, 
more positive and grow and evolve in our emotions and uh, in our psychology and our personal psychology, I think some of that stuff happens organically. People walk away or you walk away from situations or they're not nice to you for so many times and then you go, okay, yeah, this isn't working. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think too, there's been, let's face it, like there's times when you're the asshole, you know, right. and have you ever had an experience where you, cause you've had like a negative month or a negative year, you know what I mean? There's certain people that just won't put up with that, you know? And then the other story is a business story. We had a, we had a person that we were working with. Um, it was a couple, I think, big deals for most real estate, you know, they're buying and selling a, a a couple pieces of property and uh, it, pretty big commission checks, you know, really significant. Most people be like, wow, that's really big check, you know? Right. Well, in the beginning to the, everybody in the world, this particular person looked like a saint, you know, cause we have a mutual friend who knows this other person and, and they were like, Oh, I thought that person was so nice. But when you get to work with people and you see the inner workings and you get to know them at a deeper level, you really get to see how they think, right? Everybody looks nice on the outside, right? Everybody's shiny and clean. Like, look at me with the scarf. I could have a oh, yeah, shiny bald head. I would know, you know? I know. I would know. So, so, so my brother comes to me. He's really patient. Usually when I have hard people, I, I, I let him deal with it. He comes to me and he goes to me, hey. I'm not dealing with this person anymore. It was like mid deal. He goes, Hey, I'm not doing it. I'm done. She told me off and I just had enough. And I'm going, what are you having a bad day, dude? It's a big check. So I go, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll close it out. So I take over the deal. The first week. Perfect. I'm like, what the hell's wrong with this kid? He's always well, looking to blame me stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So like then, Two weeks into it, sure enough, this particular person started like talking trash about certain groups of people and how they don't want them in, in their house and, and just talking junk. And it was just so negative stuff. And I was like, you know what? After we close this deal, we're going to delete you from our database. I don't want to work with them. And I don't want to work with anyone that they know, right? Because birds of a feather flock yeah, together. Absolutely. Right? And and uh, and like that was it. We closed the deal. I closed the deal because I was like, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take their money, you know, like screw them, right? Right. And but then like right after, right after we closed it, because it was almost closed anyway. If it was in the beginning, I probably would have been like, forget about it completely, right. just like my brother did. But right after we closed it. I, I just decided, like, we both sat down and we were like, wow, are we really going to do this? We're going to take a person out of our database? Because who in business goes, I don't want your business, right? Because it's monetary, right? So after we closed it, we were just like, the hell with that. We're never going to work with that person. I don't want nothing to do with them. I don't, I don't care about anything that they bring to the table because they're just so negative and rude. And I think like, that's a big thing. All our clients love us. And I love all our clients. I call them all the time on my phone and they text me late at night and we're friends. Right. Why would people around me that are a-holes, assholes? Right. Well, you know what? I, I totally, I, I, so, I so agree with that. And you know what? Some things are just not worth the business. I mean, I get it. Money, you know, money talks, but money isn't everything. I think we have integrity and we have character and we have other things to think about. And not only that, um, we also have to put our head down at night and be able to sleep and say right. that, you know, I've done the best that I could all day today and I've treated people properly. And a lot of times when you're around that, Pretty contagious pretty contagious it's pretty contagious but I think the other part of that too is is you know if other people know that person a little bit deeper and they see you associating with them I think you know my mother always said and I hated this when I was a kid I <laughs> swear to god I was I used what to did she you say go show me your friends and I'll tell you what you are Oh you know, my uh, God, uh, isn't that the truth? No that is I'll tell you what you are. If you hang around with drug addicts, you're a drug addict. You hang around with putanas, you're a putana. You know. Tell your mom we said hi. Yeah. 
but she solid said advice. That and and it's and you know as an adult and even with my kids i yeah. have to say you know i had a conversation with my son he's like you know mom why do you have to know what's going on at somebody's house at a party and you know why do you have to call the parents and i said listen you know here's the deal you could not be doing something bad but everybody else is the police come they're not saying oh he wasn't you know doing drugs or he wasn't underage drinking he's yep. part of the group you know yep. so, i mean these things don't stop when you become an adult they actually are even more so more true and we can accept them like i had such a hard time with my with my mom with that it bothered me it used to really bother me but now i'm like yeah you have to be careful about who with whom you Associate. you know associate and um yeah and i interviewed um liz Teresa. she's an online uh, business expert and on her website it basically she spells out you have to have you know be happy be looking forward to you know working you have to be excited and have a sunny disposition and basically if you're not this just go now Right. Yeah. And, uh, and I was, I loved how she was so bold on her website. And she's basically saying, look at, if you don't fit this, you know, we're not going to work. We're not going to work well together. And don't you think, I mean, I th just think, and I see my real real estate friends here in Atlanta. I have one in particular, she was relatively new in real estate and she was telling me how people were so not nice to her. I feel like in this business, you get to see a lot of people's true colors. Just one of those businesses that you just do, you just do, you know? Yeah. Well, buying a house is emotional. Stressful, yeah. yeah. It's a For everybody the biggest love. purchase yeah. most people ever make in their life. Or the ever. biggest sale they're ever going to make in their life. Like all their equity often is tied into one property. Right. And I think that, um, you know, and then you throw in if you have kids and you want to be in a good school system and you oh, want this and you crazy. want that, you know, I think it can be, um, it can be, it can, it can be tough because it is so emotional. Like I remember when I got divorced yep. and I was, well, through my divorce, I was looking for a house and I had, was with my friend who's a realtor here in Atlanta who I've known now 23 years. And I went with her because actually through the divorce, it was, um, I had, I knew I could trust her to be quiet because I had to just kind of keep everything under wraps. Until my, personal information. Yeah. Yeah. Until my divorce was final. Yeah. So, um, we, in, uh, when I finally, when we came to see this townhouse that I'm living in now, which I love, 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 and you guys won't believe this. Like, if you came here. We're coming, we're coming there, ATL. Yeah. Oh, we're yeah, going to go. But if you saw my townhouse, like, it's such an awesome house. In Boston, it'd be like a million bucks. <laughs> Two million. You know what I mean? It's like four bedroom, four and a half baths. It's wow. 2,700 square feet. And, um, and I remember when I took my kids... Now you have to understand the house that my husband I didn't want it. It was too big. Hey, I'm Mike Marino and I'm making America Italian again. And you're listening to me on the Just Steph Show. But um no, it went the house that my kids were leaving on a full time yep. basis what had seven bedrooms, nine bathrooms, you know, I mean a karaoke I had a karaoke bar with the stage. Like yep. you know, I mean it was it pool with the slide, pool house, you know, I mean, it was this is in Boston. No, no. Here. In okay. Atlanta. Yep. Yep. So when I came, when I was looking at this townhouse and I had made the decision to, to buy it because I really didn't want to deal with the yard. My, I brought my kids here. Yep. It, and they were running around the house going, mom, we love it here. And I went in a corner and I was crying because I knew what they were leaving. And my realtor, came, she, she's a dear friend of mine, she came up behind me and hugged me and she said, it's going to be okay. I love realtors for that. They, they just such like such incredible, most of them are such caring people. Right. And so she, 
she put her arms around me and she said, it's going to be okay. It's going to be, because I couldn't figure out why my kids were so happy to be here when they were leaving Disneyland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I can see how it can be very emotional and hard on people, but that doesn't mean you can't, you have to be mean and not nice. Right, like everybody has a bad day, but I think sometimes you could you could easily see trends in people where they're constantly being an a-hole. And right. the other thing about it, you, you often see that post on Facebook, which I think is so true. Like you take out somebody to dinner or lunch and you watch how they treat the wait staff when they can't right. do anything for them. And so the person who's an a-hole, right, they're gonna, if, they're, if for example, they're interviewing to get a job with you or something like that, they're gonna be super nice to you, right? right. But how do they treat everybody else around them? Right. And that's what you have to pay attention for. Because those people, usually once you ring them on or you get into a relationship with them, usually people don't come off just being an a-hole right from the beginning, right? Out the gate. You get to know them. You know this person's usually happy and positive or they're negative all the time, you know? And right. I think that's huge. I know. I get – it's so funny because when I get out of the car at, ha at my pl favorite place down here, I know the I know the valets. Yeah. I actually wrote a wrote – a, blog a couple of years ago called shut up and drive love your valet and these guys are like hey it's jeff and you know i'm like hi how, how, you know i love i love everybody and you know like the garbage man i'm like hi do you want a water yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the best you know and that's and it's funny because i mean not to like my my ex-husband was not that way like he just wasn't all, all that friendly and he wasn't and i was like i would we'd have workers at the house and i'd be like hey there's a refrigerator in the garage that's the drink refrigerator help yourselves yeah you want want like but that's how i grew up my father was like that my father used to bring the mailman in the house and give him a bottle of like galliano for christmas you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Arthur loves giving booze to the mailman. Oh, yeah, all the time. He wants to make sure. He <laughs> That's so funny. I, I do the same thing. Whenever I have, like, work being done in my house, people come over. I'm like, by the way, there's beers in the fridge and coffee if you want it. Make yourself at home. Yeah, yeah. I mean, always. And, um, you know, my media guy would come and, and I'd, like, I'd be making, making him a Cosmo, you know, or like, um, you know, my painter had to come and look for it, look at a job. He showed up with his, um, I think his cousin and they were both already had been drinking beers. I'm like, you guys want another one? They're like, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, it's reality and it's nice. And, and what, what do you have if you don't have, relationships right i don't care if you have cars jewelry a louis vuitton bag a port i don't care a scarf a scarf the scarf, scarf maybe is a scarf stuff scarf. Oh, you, you know the scarf works but you can hug it like a pillow people don't realize you take none of that with you and but what mm. you do take is that love that you have in your in your heart and and relationships like People say, you know, how do you, you know, how do you measure, measure success? And I mean, and there's different ways to measure it. And yes, like with my business that I have going on and things that, you know, I said to my coach the other day, you know, making money isn't the end all be all, but it's part of feeling successful in what you're doing, that you're okay. actually putting out something that is valuable. Mm -hmm. But that's not for me. Success, I measure it in right relationships. When you have good, healthy relationships, that is success for me. Yeah. And some of that means shaking people out. You got to shake them out. Shake, you got to shake, shake them out. Them out. Shake, I'm like, shake them like, out. I'll shake them. And, and it feels good, I think, to be around good people, you know. And, and like you said, you can't – money's good, you know, because the earthly things are great. But, like, the things you really keep are – memories right which are things of the heart and those things like you can't buy like don't you have situations where you remember a deep conversation or where somebody was really nice to you in a tough time or where like you were down and somebody was there for you i remember that stuff more than money stuff you know what i mean absolutely i remember like cracking up with my cousins yeah like, yeah kid, just like, like can't buy that. No, I mean, just dying. Like my stomach is killing me, dying laughing. That's that. There's nothing better than that. Yeah. 
So yep. you can't find that's what everybody should aim to. Uh, absolutely. I want to I want to give you guys a chance to talk a little. First of all, you're doing a lot of motivational stuff uh, where you're trying to get people to even even if they're not in real estate or trying to buy real estate. You're I see what you're doing as being so motivational to be um, to be manifesting great things in your life and to be, you know, doing good things and having that positive mindset. Um, what do you think, I mean, have you been doing this all along or this is, I mean, cause I'm seeing more of this from you guys, like with just, not just talking about business, but talking about the reality of people's evolution. Yeah, I think uh, in general for most people, like life is hard, right? And, and most people really grow up hard. a certain way, right? So like you come, you know, say from not so many means or some people come from great means. And usually your way of thinking and your lifestyle when you get older will reflect that. So for us, we've been, we've had to do so much like intentional changing, growing, reading, learning. The things we talk about on our podcast, the things that we've done. And sometimes people are like, oh, like who needs Tony Robbins? Like blah, blah, blah. But when you're in a place where you, you don't have that much and everybody around you is saying like you can't do it and it's not possible to do these things that you're trying to do, you have to get out of that circle and you have to go out there and seek people that are doing things at a higher level than you. So this is what's helped us. And now that we're what we consider to be very successful in business and in life, we want to kind of give back to the yeah. people who may be having a hard day or struggling. Because, I mean, for the first five years or more, in this business, it was not easy. It's just like starting the business from scratch with, without a network and everything. So we're just trying to do our small part by helping people out and giving back, you know. And this is like, you're talking about 15 years of learning and we used to fight all the time. And like, I think just in life, we started off with the crabs in the bucket. You know what I mean? So I, I think feel, we were crabs in the yeah, bucket. Yeah, we were the crabs. And I Absolutely. think we're like running so fast from that but I think what's happening now is we've been doing it for so long that it's starting to show. But what people don't understand, like I see some of my friends that are my age that are like, I'm going to do it. And it's your first year or your first month of doing it. Well, I've been reading books and going to seminars for 15 years. But I'll tell you what, the first time I remember, I remember I used to sell like just I used to do crazy things, you know, I was a completely different person and I wouldn't be on this podcast and my brother would come in to me for six months and he'd be like, read this book, read this book. I'd be like, get this book out of my face. I got like other plans. You know what I mean? Like, I got plans. I got plans, Let's get that other I got plans. plans to be the man. So, <laughs> <laughs> he sure did. Uh, yeah. Like I was like, people don't understand. We, 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 we weren't like, we just didn't have opportunity. And not only didn't we not have opportunity, we literally like crabs in a bucket, we a completely different mindset, like completely like yeah. people would be shocked if we could take a video camera and go back to the beginning of our lives. And like, he would at some point when I was like, you know, like late teens, he came to me and he's like, read this book, read this. This kid's obviously the smartest. He's like, incredible i'm a genius he's a genius they call me einstein oh yeah so like he'd be like read this book and for six months i'd be like get this book out of my effing face you know what i mean right and then i picked up one of his books that he gave me this and i read that book rich. and then i read what, 20 what was the name of the book do you remember think and grow rich think and grow rich i think right was yeah. it yeah well he would know so i so i so I picked up the book and I read it. And that year I read 23 books and I haven't stopped reading or learning or watching positive videos or going to positive seminars ever since you're talking about 15 years ago. Right. So, and I just never stopped and just think about that. And most of the time I felt like nothing. And I, and I, at one point I completely left, all my old friends completely like I'm talking about I shut it down like I shut it down I was like screw these people completely left all my old habits and all all my old life and you're talking bad like jail stuff bad stuff running like law like just crazy and um and now people are like dude you look so happy 
your smile, your positive energy. And like, I sometimes laugh, you know, cause like you're you, you know, I was always a good hearted person, but like after you put in work for so many years and, and I can't wait to see how it's going to be 15 years from now, another 15 years of this. And it's a different life, but it's so worth it. I think it's so worth it, but I really think life, I know life is so, so, so hard. It's so hard. Like I can cry just thinking about how hard it is for people. It's so hard to see your way out of shit when you're in it. They can't, they, yeah, they can't, they can't get there. There's, there is no light at the end of the tunnel, you know? And, but what people don't realize, and I, and I try to talk about this in, you know, the stuff that I'm offering, like, why would you want to even work with me or talk with me about stuff? And the reason, if you just put in, like, you just put in a little bit of, hard work a little bit in the you know for for a little while maybe be uncomfortable with trying to make some changes and 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 changing your life and changing your thinking and it's uncomfortable it's like cleaning a wound it hurts before you heal once you if you can put in that little bit of time you have so much liberation on the other side you're free from the shackles of negativity and um you know and just being you know feeling bad about things that you don't have to feel bad about or maybe you know you're you feel responsible for everybody else's happiness when when you work through that stuff you know that you're not responsible for anybody else's happiness you start to let go of that then you start to not get into other people's business you know and you stay in your lane and when you do that you're, you have so much energy and time for the good stuff, right? So yeah, much yeah, more energy. so much. I'm going to write a book one day soon. <laughs> and the book yeah. is called The Ladder Effect. And it's basically going to talk about how, you know, if you were to climb a ladder, right? Um, say there's only the top thing and the, bo- and the bottom step. And, it, and there's no, no steps in between. Now, if you're like an incredibly strong person, you could get to the top by like virtue of pulling yourself up. You're going to fall because you didn't build it right. So like when you're coming from the bottom to the top, all you got to do is get to the next step, build the next step of the ladder, build the next step of the ladder, build the next step. And then you end up on top and you can look down and maybe then you can build yourself another ladder to go higher. But you can't go from the bottom step of the ladder to the top by skipping steps or by, you know what I mean? You got to go up one step at a time. So if you're at the bottom, your next step is a little higher. It's not the top, you know? Well, I I love that idea. It's like my member of my book, The Only Way Is Up. The The Only Way Is is Up. up. Woo, let's go. (laughs) But no, you know, the thing is, is, and that's how when people say it's all about the journey or- Yeah. (laughs) Look, you guys are the best. <laughs> there I was, really cute back then. The only is up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys are just looking at that picture. Oh, that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Look, we got more. Uh, that's, yeah, that's me in Italy. <laughs> no way. What part of Italy? That was Rome. That's the forum. No but way. I'm actually, I'm actually going to Sicily. I rented a house for a month in Sicily. Uh, wow. Next Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, this is, it's very exciting, kind of sidetracking here. Um, my kids are going to come for a couple of weeks, and then I'm hosting a, uh, a, all, a women's retreat in Sicily. That's awesome. So five women, they have to apply and be interviewed via Zoom. I got to look at you, make sure you're not, not a man trying to be a <laughs> woman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put on the wig and be in. like, I, I need this so bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, this is Marco Paulos with Fat Cat Swinger Louis Prima Jr., also known as Marco on Sax, and you're listening to the Jess Steph Show. But yeah, we're gonna do a feel groovy retreat in um in Sicily for five five women, and we're gonna we're gonna adopt the Sicilian lifestyle and just you know feel groovy. We're gonna do yoga and go to a winery and get a cooking lesson and all That's of that. Awesome. Yeah. So That's gonna- an awesome retreat. Can I go? Me and all the ladies? Oh, yeah. 
and the scarf. <laughs> do you want to share a room or do you want a single room? No, uh, I, I want my own room. Yeah. yeah. I'll interview them to come in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. So funny. But yeah, so I mean, I, I mean, I love Italy and I think it, and I'm looking forward to it. I've been trying to do my Rosetta Stone. So, uh, but anyway, um, I think putting in a little, going back to our topic, but putting in that little bit of work, you can, you can actually love the journey because it's so hard. You say, how can I love the journey where I hate where I'm at and I want to be over there? Well, when you are building those steps, like you said, and you are doing the next right thing and living in your genius and operating in your zone and, and living with purpose, you can be content right now yep. knowing that you're building those steps. I think there's a quote yeah. that comes to my mind and it's from Tony Robbins, you know, like everybody, wherever you are, like you don't have to be the greatest, the richest, like the best, but I think like there's a place where every person starts, right? Wherever you are, there you are. Yeah. And, and then like we're all searching for happiness and financial wealth and all this stuff. But it's really just like personal fulfillment. And I think the quote is progress equals happiness. If you start somewhere and you go further than you thought you could, that's progress. That, that inevitably turns out to be fulfillment inside your soul. So if you're not progressing and if you're not working on becoming a better version of yourself, then you're not experiencing happiness wherever you are. And that can be done in every, at every level, right? So progress is happiness. Like Absolutely. You have progress. And you know, you guys were talking about where you came from and you know, I grew up in Medford, slept in the same bed as my sister. We had no money and whatever. And it was a very turbulent, rough existence. Yep. And it was very volatile and um lots of yelling and screaming and all that stuff and I, the funny thing is is like i i'm amazed like i i don't even know how i i got here because i'm like i don't need, like i'm my kids will say i yell but i go that's i'm just italian but <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not really yelling at them like me like i'll just be like you know, passionate but in general like it, i'm so zen I'm like so peaceful. Yeah. I want that in my life. I had so much turbulence, even in, you know, going into the marriage and all of that and trying to get out of the marriage was even worse. But, you know, I just kind of, you know, my, my, my lawyer, when she, she said to me, okay, what are your priorities and what do you want to get out of this divorce? Like, what are your priorities? And I said, number one, my kids. Yeah. Number two, it wasn't even money. It was peace. I just want peace. Yeah. You know what, Steph? I will say this. I don't think you got to where you are by chance. You clearly work hard on yourself and a positive person. And there are people that started in the same neighborhood, in the same town, probably with the Mepha. same circumstances that like you could go back and meet today and you'd be like, wow, they didn't do anything from that point to now. So like you only got there because you worked on yourself, right? There is no, there is no, like, there's no skipping. You don't just land on the moon, right? Like, it's hard work. There's no such it's hard, work. hard work. Either way, it's hard, right? Like living a shit life is hard and being positive is hard, but one's better than the latter, you know? Well, I think uh, being positive is more liberating. More, it's, yeah, it's way more fun. Energy, so you have more energy for other stuff. But I think I see the, the most unhappy people are the ones that are stagnant, that they complain about where they're at, but yet they never make the changes. They ne yeah, they never take, and it take, it's hard work, you know, it's hard work. I, they're even more miserable than the miserable people. Cause and, the, yeah. you know what I mean? They, they know there's something wrong and they want, they, they want things to change, but they just, they don't really want to change and they don't really want to make changes in their thinking or in their lives. And they just stay where they're at. You have to want to change. You have to want to put in the effort, you know, and really, and, and it's so not really a lot, but what it takes is very scary. You've got to look in the mirror. And those- Damn. Damn. The man in the mirror. Uh. <laughs> and when you look in the mirror in those early days, it's so hard. It's so hard because you just don't like who you are. You don't like what you see. And it takes so long to get to that place where you're like, oh, my God, I feel great. Yeah. And sometimes you got to leave the environment to do that, you know? Yep. 
you, well, I moved out of Boston. Yeah. You know, I mean, I left mm -hmm. and, you know, I was married and stuff, but I have to say that I had to learn. I mean, I was like, I grew up, my mother was frying meatballs every Sunday. You know, I mean, it was like the same, you know, and I have friends in Boston, that's what they're doing still on Sundays. And it's, there's nothing wrong with the heritage and, and with the traditions, but I've had to adapt and say, well, we're not going to do that on Sunday because my kids got baseball and then there's a baseball party afterwards. There's nothing I can do. Yeah, you know, right. I mean, I can't say no. Or if we get invited to somebody's house or some, something to do, I can't say no, I'm frying meatballs. You know, <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. I want to enjoy my life. Like now I go out on Sundays and we watch football. And, yeah. um, you know, and I've got a group of friends, we go out actually, and I will say this, I love Boston more than anything. There's nothing better than Boston, but really Atlanta is amazing for watching football, whether it's college or pros, everybody loves it. There's places to go. Everybody's into it. It's fun. It's very upbeat. You guys would love it. We're going to have to come up to Atlanta to, to watch there. a football game. Come on, bring it, bring it. You guys, anytime. I can't wait to go ATL. ATL. We're going to, we're to house, though. You have to come to house, and then maybe I'll take you to Johnny's Hideaway. Oh Johnny's yeah, Hideaway. That wow, sounds that sounds good. cool. Yeah, there's lots of cool places here. We're in. I'm awesome. In. So, all right. How about three top tips for um, you know, business or real estate or whatever, whatever you got. What do you got? Three top tips. Three top tips. I'm gonna say number one is you have to work hard. Most people that don't say they haven't worked hard or say you don't have to work hard, they probably haven't done it or they've worked so hard for so long that they, you know, like they're already there. So, so actually John Maxwell said this, when you see somebody that's successful, don't ask them what they do, ask them what they did to get there. So I would say for me, tip number one is work hard. You want to hit him with tip number two? You know what's funny? My tip number one was work hard too. This kid just stole it out of my snack. Tip number two. There is no tip number two. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna give him tip number two. So I'd say the second most important thing in business and life is consistency, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not about going to the gym and killing yourself. It's about going to the gym every single day, right? Because if you build that habit and that pattern. You're going to look fit and ripped and people are going to be like, wow, you must spend four hours of the day at the gym. And you're like, no, I only go a half hour, but I go every single day for the last 10 years. Right. Okay. Consist so uh, work hard, consistency. And David's going to hit him with tip number three. Work on yourself. Ooh, I think no. Your, your business only grows to the extent that you do. So like you can work hard and you could be consistent, but if you don't work on yourself and thinking good and being good and taking care of your body, mind, and soul, your business just, it'll grow, but you'll be miserable. So you always got to work on yourself because that, that in turn makes you a good business person, you know, Absolutely. And because we always believe in under promising and over delivering. We're going to give you tip number four. This Woo! is from David. Get from and me. It's have fun. Have I fun. mean, he loves this one. He has too I much fun. I love having fun. I'm like, have we got to work is like number one. Hard work <laughs> has fun is no hard one. work. <laughs> he puts stuff in my calendar. I go, oh, that'll be fun. Or, oh, that won't be fun. And it's usually like, that's my first thing is like, have fun. You never know. You never know. Tomorrow, tomorrow isn't promised to anyone. And you got to have fun. You got to be able to laugh. I love that. So how can people get in touch with you? Couple ways. So Call we have this guy. We have a real estate website, dna-realty.com. You can check us out there. You could email us. My email is Arthur A R T H U R at dna-realty.com. That's R E A L T Y. Um, we have a podcast, The Modern American Dream. They could find us there. But literally, if you Google DNA Realty Group, we're on Facebook, LinkedIn. There, you know, yeah, Snapchat, like we'll whatever. pop up in so many places. Yeah, everywhere. And David, I mean. It depends on the date. If you get I through can't him, even find him. If you get through him, you might be able to get to me. <laughs> Maybe. I am telling you, there's day stuff and weeks that I don't know where he is or what he's doing. He's exclusive. Yeah, he's exclusive. <laughs> That's right. If you find him, wrap him up, get a rope around him. Yeah. And bring... You need to put a bungee cord on him. Yeah, you have oh to. Oh, my God. I No way. I'd get a knife and cut that thing See? in the front. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, guys. Well, listen, thanks for joining me on the Just Steph Show. We're going to post it. We'll post this everywhere. We'll send you the links and, and uh, we'll make sure we have your um, all hey, your. You're the best. And remember, one. remember when we first met, I was like, I want to be on your show. Remember that? <laughs> and we're on your show. This is like so, so like, it's not that far from the time we met you, but it's pretty, yeah. like, it's been a while. Well, it's over a year. Remember, I was like, I want to be on your show. Let me get on. I spoke at that. We spoke at the we same night. We spoke at the same night. Yeah. yeah this is so event. awesome. I can't believe we're on your show. I'm like so pumped. And so the pumped. last thing I, I will say is make sure you get yourself a copy of this book. That's right. Well, guys, let me tell you, if if you go to my website, you can actually get in a free um, download of my 10 groovy do's to get you in the groove when you subscribe to my newsletter. And then you get exclusive deals from Just Steph, you know, feel groovy uh, stuff that's uh, happening, including first crack at classes, online class. We're gonna be launching an online class, 12 weeks to feel groovy. We also, I also offer one-on-one -on -one, um, consulting and coaching 12 weeks to feel groovy up up close and personal with just Steph. And we have my feel groovy retreat that's coming up. And of course my feel groovy speaking engagements because I just spoke in Dubai. And I know, uh, that's so awesome. I rode a camel. That's wow. Oh my God. That's so awesome. I have a camel story. It's so bad. God, one geez. time, one time I used to be like, I used to be like 70 pounds heavier. And you know how like you bring kids to the little like, I don't know. They do those little shows where they bring right. all the animals and they had a camel there. And usually like the animals are like on their way out kind of. Right. <laughs> so, so like my son rides a camel and I've never rode a camel. So I go, I want to ride the camel. The guy looks at me and he goes, yeah, you're too big. You're going to kill the camel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So I, 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 got, I guess I got to go to Dubai. Well, I'll tell you what, it was amazing. And uh, it, it was a great trip. Then maybe we'll talk another time on another show about Dubai. But it, it was amazing. And I was really blessed to be there. And I was the keynote speaker and I didn't even know. And no <laughs> way. I think that's unreal, right? That's, that's crazy. Unreal. Yeah, wow. so it was great. And, uh, you know, but I learned a lot and I... You know, I put on my big girl panties and went by myself to the Middle East. And I did great and I enjoyed it. I met a lot of really amazing people. I mean, just how would I, a girl from Medford? End up fun. in Dubai. I was like, what? Like if someone That's told your me next me, book from Medford to Dubai. It's a long way. I know, it's a long way. But I, you know, I met all these wonderful people and they all, a lot of people came up to me after my talk and... They were, you know, they're healthcare educators and nurses and everything from around the world. Like, it's just amazing. So, yeah, it was a great experience for me. Um, I definitely, I mean, I, I loved my talk and everyone loved it, but I feel like I received more than I was, could even give because it Which was just incredible. Great. So, yeah, it was great. All right, guys, I got to go find out what Eddie's doing. All right, go we, catch on Eddie. Eddie. <laughs> we try to hold her off as long as we could. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I love you. Wishing you All right, bye. Ciao, ciao, baby. Love you. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Just Steph Show. I really care about you, your happiness, and helping you make great choices for your life. So tune in next week for more wisdom from me. In the meantime, follow me on my Just Steph Facebook page, on Twitter at Steph Palermo, my Instagram account is Just Steph One, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Steph Palermo. See you next week. Ciao, ciao, baby.